I need you to show me. Mm-hmm. And I, I need a way to try to trust you. Mm-hmm. And that was really when God set me on a completely different trajectory in life. And, you know, years later, multiple diagnoses later, met my husband fast forward. I'm 10 years cancer free this year. Oh, praise God. Yay. Having a hope in Jesus, seeing that there was a different path and picture. But I want to talk about what to do when you're in that pit. The season that we've been in has been just almost a slow drip of a little bit of hopelessness and maybe we've been steeped a little in it, but that's very different than feeling like completely void of hope Mm -hmm. and being so deep down low in a pit that you can't even see the way out. Mm -hmm. And um, I have certainly been in a situation like that where I didn't just feel hopeless, I was gripped with terror that there was no other path forward other than death. And um, I was 26, I was first diagnosed with cancer. I, you know, had had lived life about 100 miles an hour, walked away from the Lord 10 years prior and was just doing everything in my own strength and for my own will and purposes. And God violently stopped me with a cancer diagnosis that, where I found myself on the floor of my parents' bathroom, uh, not too far from the studio, (laughs) in the middle of a three-day quarantine for radioactive iodine treatment. I had metastasized thyroid cancer that started in my neck and just went to all of the surrounding lymph nodes in my chest and head and um, into my heart cavity. I was not walking with the Lord. I didn't know what God's word said about there being a hope and a future. And we were talking about Jeremiah 29, 11, and all of these verses that we can wash ourselves with and, and grasp onto the hope and reassurance that we have when we're steeped in the word of God. I didn't have that. And I found myself on the floor of a bathroom crying and calling out to a a God that I did not at the time even believe in, had grown up in church and had walked away. And it wasn't until I pressed my face on the cold tile floor of my parents' bathroom and said, God, if you're real, I'm sorry. I have made a mess of my life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to die. I have not lived for you. I've Mm -hmm. sacrificed everything, all the gifts and abilities and things you've put inside me to do. And if I'm wrong and you're real, I need you to show me Mm -hmm. and I I need a way to try to trust you. Mm -hmm. And that was really when God set me on a completely different trajectory in life. And, you know, years later, multiple diagnoses later, met my husband fast forward. I'm 10 years cancer free this year. Praise God. Having a hope in Jesus, seeing that there was a different path and picture. But I want to talk about what to do when you're in that pit. Not what happens when you get the hope and you walk out and you go into your life and people are encouraging encouraging you. I wanna talk about what happens in that pit when you're so low, it's so depressing, it's so dark, and there is a complete lack of a hope in Jesus. Mm -hmm. What do we do when we get there Mm -hmm. if we don't have Him? If we don't have the scriptures and the strong foundation of Jesus Christ to stand on? What do we do in that situation? Um, And I I really wrestled with that Mm -hmm. in my darkest moment. I mean, as I think back throughout the course of my life, it was real. There was no moment where I wasn't, where I was lower. Mm -hmm. And um, by the grace of God, by His goodness, I got up and I left the bathroom floor and I, I walked out and started asking some of those questions. Well, Lord, if you're real, you know, what did you make me to do? And what are your plans? And if I don't know everything about my life and I'm to lay down certain things and pick up something different, well, what will that look like? And I just want to throw that out. Um, Good questions. To be part of yeah. the conversation because it's so easy to talk about, you know, the season we've been in and just this slow drip of hopelessness and it's, you know, things are bad and it's really discouraging and where are you, Lord? But I'm talking about what to do when you're deep in the pit. I think hope, it's a heart posture, it's a mind posture as well. It's like you can allow yourself to think on all sorts of things throughout the day. You know, we 
Nobody else gets to choose our thoughts. But I think that one of the things that can actually hold us back in this journey is when we allow all the negative thoughts that just play over and over and over in our heads like a tape. And when that happens, I find myself grabbing hold of that thought um, immediately and replacing it with the truth of what God's Word said. And also, um, everything comes from the heart all the issues of life. And when you have made a determination that there is no one in this life that you are going to love more than you love Jesus, then hope becomes an ever-present reality. We need community. Right. We And we tend to isolate when we're hopeless. I mean, I know I've done that. You know, I just I just want to be alone. And I, I have three friends um, where... We met in really unusual circumstances. We couldn't be more different. Mm -hmm. I mean, none of us would shop in the same store. You know, we all look at each other like, really? Really? <laughs> but we'd made this kind of commitment to each other. And, and during COVID, I can't tell you what that was like for me because mm -hmm. we get we jumped on Zoom calls once a week mm -hmm. and we'd pray for each other for an hour. Mm -hmm. And some days I didn't want to do it. Yeah. And they would text me and they're like, get on the phone mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. and. There was just something about when you're in that place, mm -hmm. having sisters around you who know the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think you have to be careful who you hang with yes. when you're in a dark place, because you can either hang with somebody who's going to agree and amen mm -hmm. the negative yeah. or like with my friends. And we've, it's been interesting because in the two years, you know, I went through a cycle of depression. Mm -hmm. Diane went through cancer treatment. We've all gone through different things. And at different times, we've been like, let's remind each other mm -hmm. who God is. Let's yeah. remind each other, you know, why we're here. And, and I think that's one of the things that really brings back our hope when yeah. we're able to speak truth to one another. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. I saw some of that in my journey with my, my mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. When I started dating my husband and we knew that we were serious and I went to Charleston <laughs> to meet Barry's mom and dad, <laughs> I'll never forget walking into the house and it's like Shrine of Barry. I mean, there's oh, no. pictures in velvet, there's oil no. paintings. Oh, yes. Oh, no, and I'm no. like, wow, this, oh, is, wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> and it became clear to me pretty quickly that my father-in-law, William, was just a doll. We loved him. And my mother-in-law did not like me. Mm -hmm. And I tried really hard, because I'd never encountered that before, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, where somebody would literally be an inch from your face yelling at you, because oh. in Scotland, we just don't do that. Yeah. We're too tired and it's too cold. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just really hard. And then she got um, cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And so she asked me, she wanted to be healed. And we would bring her, when I was with the Women of Faith, we'd bring her back, we'd anoint her, we'd pray for her. Anytime she heard of any healer, she would say to me, will you take me? And I was like, absolutely. I mean, we went to some strange meetings. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> <Can they sign? laughs> yes. And it when it became clear eventually that that was not God's, the way God was going to do it, I remember it was, she was in hospice care, but at home. And Barry and Christian and I moved in with them to help care for her. And I took the night shift because I just did better staying up at night. And I would go through, I'd get my hymn book. She was a Lutheran, I'd get the hymn book and I'd sing the way through the hymn book during the night. And then one night she said the most interesting thing to me. She said, you know, if it was you, God would have healed you. And I said, oh, wow. what, do you, wow. what do you mean? And wow. she said, um, she said, there's things in my past you don't know about. And, and I know I haven't been very kind to you. And I'm like, I'm sure I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> The yelling in the face. But it was like we had this God moment of yeah. this holy moment yeah. in the final days of her life of me saying, God does not love me one grain of sand more than he loves you. You've never lived an unloved moment in your life. Yeah. And to see the goodness of God as he poured yes. hope into this mm -hmm. woman who was becoming so fragile. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to her, okay, mom, is there anything I could do for you once you've gone that would be important to you? And she said, well, the piano in our church is terrible, which I know because I had to sing there <laughs> yeah. and I don't know what key he was playing in, but it was different than the one I was singing. Oh, wow. And so I said, absolutely. And so I, we ordered this piano and had it engraved with her name oh. and it arrived the day of her funeral. Wow. And I got to sing Great is Thy Faithfulness wow. at my, and I just thought, you know, wow. it's never too late. If you have a pulse, there's yes. not a 
a chalk mark around your body. Yeah. It's not too late to cry out and for God to fill you with his hope. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.